V80s brought us some true iconic supercars, but it's quite hard to pick the most iconic one. The Countach, thanks to its wedge-shaped design, Testarossa, thanks to Miami Vice, or Vector, thanks to his technology. But no one managed to capture the essence of the 80s like Chisetta. The crazy design with the side strikes, the quad pop-up headlights and all the 16 cylinders. Even the connection with the father of the disco music. So hello guys and welcome back to another video. And here is the story of Chisetta Moroder V16D. The story of Chisetta begins with one man's dream. Claudio Zampoli was an ex Lamborghini test driver and engineer, who later had moved to California where he had started selling Lamborghinis, and later had started servicing Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Maseratis and other exotic brands. Being born in Modena, Claudio always had wanted to build his own supercar. But he wanted to build something special, since the only way to succeed was by standing out from the crowd. He wanted his supercar to be powered by a single block V16 engine, but at the same time a supercar which was easy to work on. His idea was to mount the engine transversely like Miura, so you could get the engine out easily. Since he had worked with European Exotic for years, he didn't like how things were going especially with the mid-engines, when you had to tear apart the whole car, just to remove the engine. Plus the transverse layout was another plus which would help the car to stand out. With this in mind, Zapoli started searching for investors. Since his repair shop was located in LA, he knew many celebrities and wealthy people, so it wasn't very hard to find investors. One of the most interesting thing is that Zampoli originally considered Sylvester Stallone as a business partner, but everything changed when Giorgio Moroder brought his Lamborghini Countach to Zampoli's shop. Moroder was basically a god. The new bread would be called Cisetta Moroder, taking the initials of Claudio Zampoli, C for C and Zeta for Z, and the last name of Moroder. The logo would have the blue and yellow colors, the colors of Modena, the city where the car would be built and the birthplace of Zampoli, while the wolf's head on the logo represented the Tiberian wolf which fed Romulus and Remus, who found at Rome, which was the birthplace of Moroder. Zampoli and Moroder decided to build their supercar in Modena for the simple reason that Modena is the city of supercars. Ferrari and Maserati were based there, and Lamborghini isn't that far away, while at the time Romano Artioli was also building his new Bugatti factory, so it wasn't hard to find ex-engineers and mechanics who knew how to work with supercars. So with everything being set up, Zampoli started working on the development of the car. Like in every supercar, the engine was going to be the main focus of Chisetta and Zapoli had worked with, his, with this idea for quite a while. Like I mentioned before, he wanted to build a V16 engine, and when he was asked why he chose a V16 engine, he said, If the car had 12 cylinders, it would be no big news. As a small and exclusive car maker, I had to be different. And this would really put Chisetta into the map. V16s weren't used since the Second World War, and even back then they were extremely rare. Only a number of ultra luxurious cars had used them, or uh, some record breakers which mostly used airplane engines. The V16 engine like the entire car was going to build from the ground up, something that should be applauded, considering that Chisetta was a new brand. The engine was built by welding two V8 engines together, nose to nose. Now there is a big misconception that these were Uraco P300S engines, but this actually isn't true. Intentionally or not, the internal architecture of the engine was very similar. In fact, the bore and stroke of 86 time 645 mm were the same. Claudio decided to mount the engine transversely like Miura had done before, 
Also, the engine was tilted 10 degrees forward to help keep the center of gravity low and to help it mate to the transaxle. And this configuration gave the car the V16T designation. T meaning transverse and not turbo like most of the cars. With 8 camshafts and 4 valves per cylinder, the power output was at 450 horsepower at 8000 rpm and 500 pound foot of torque at 6000 rpm. These were crazy numbers for the time. This could be only topped by the 1000 horsepower tuned cars like Koenig Special Testarossas and by Vectors. But the claims were always a bit questionable. While the transmission came from ZF and was a 5 speed manual. But of course, the most iconic part of the V16T is the design. Now, there is a lot of misconception when it comes to the design of this car. In the mid 80s, Marcello Gaddini had started working on the new Lamborghini, which would replace the aging Countach. Gandini had been responsible for most of the Lambos until then, and he was responsible for creating Lamborghini's wild look. But everything changed when Kleiser took off Lamborghini. Kleiser came up with a new plan to save Lambo, which had gone bankrupt many times. And they said that Gandini's design was uh, too outlandish for the American market, which was the biggest supercar market. Now, how a Lamborghini can be too Atlantish, I don't know. But Kleiser reworked the design heavily, with making it softer looking. Gandini was frustrated with this decision, since he had never had any problems with his previous Lamborghini designs, like Miura and Countach, so he took his design to Chisetta. When Gandini went over to Chisetta, Zampoli had already a design, but he agreed to use Gandini's design since the prototype of the car was too conservative and quite dated for the time. Gandini reworked his design, especially the rear and the side of the car, so the new engine could fit the V16 transverse engine, and it looks like the original design had only two pop-up headlights, instead of the four that the V16T had. Like the rest of the 80s supercar, Zampoli used a tubular space frame chassis for his car, but almost no carbon fiber at all was used here. Many supercars from this time period had started experimenting with this material, like the Head 40 and the game-changing EB110. But not Chisetta, the only carbon fiber piece was founded on the dashboard, while the aluminum body panels were made by hand in Torino. And finally, after all this work, the car made its debut in December 1988 in Century City, LA, in an amazing party where a number of celebrities were invited, including here Jane Leno, which was the host of the show. It's a brand new motor, it's a 16 cylinder. 
After the gala debut, the white Chisetta was also shown at the LA Auto Show and was followed by the Geneva Mod Auto Show. The reception was amazing. Things were looking good for the new Modena Best Company. Some people were interested to buy the new Beast. From 167 people that attended the show, 14 of them put a $100,000 deposit down to get one of their own. Zapoli was excited at having made $1.4 million in one weekend, but even more thrilled to have the chance to build his dream car for the world. But things just weren't meant to be, since problems for Chisetta started immediately after the debut. Giorgio and Claudio started having disputes with each other. Moroder wasn't happy with the fact that it would take two or three years to start the production of the car. So he started looking for ways to make the Chisetta cheaper and faster. Without the knowledge of Zampoli, Moroder went to Germany to speak to a Porsche designer about making the Chisetta with fiberglass instead of aluminium. Moroder was also considering the replacing the V16 engine with a BMW engine. Zampoli didn't prove any of Moroder's ideas. He said, fiberglass is like paper to metal. And the engine I built is a jewel in a crown. Nobody else has a 16 cylinder transverse engine configuration, and to change would be to make it into an entirely different car. Moroder and Zampoli agreed on terms of a split, giving Moroder the Chisetta prototype, and Zampoli took 100% ownership of the company. And since Moroder was out of the deal, the brand lost the Moroder name and would be called Chisetta Automobili. Zampoli started working on the 14 cars that he already had sold. But the split wasn't the biggest problem for Zampoli. The v 16 t didn't comply with the American regulations, so Zampoli couldn't sell his car there. So he was left with the European and the Japanese market, which had shown interest when the car made the original debut, but this interest had started to die, with the production taking a long time and with the economical crisis of the time. The process of building a single car was very slow, since everything was made by hand, so only 5 cars were built in the initial run. This was extremely low, especially when you compare it with their competitors. Which by the time that Chisena finally started hitting the streets, had started introducing their new models. Lamborghini had presented the Diablo, Jaguar the XJ220, the reborn Bugatti, the EB110, and McLaren had entered the production car business with the record smashing F1. And all of these cars were better, and they complied with American regulation, so they could be sold there, plus they were cheaper than Chisetta. And the most important thing, they had the deep pockets. 
Zampoli sold some of his own personal sport cars, including here a Miura and even a Ferrari 250 to fund the project, and was uh, rolling profits from the sale of each V16T back into Cisetta. But suppliers started de demanding larger orders to be placed, and they wanted to be paid in advance, which was something that Zampoli couldn't do. In the end, Zampoli would run out of money and in September 1994, Cisetta Automobili filed for bankruptcy. Claudio would uh, relocate to California, when he would try to revive the brand. The biggest thing that would happen in America is that he would build a raster version of Cisetta. This would come in 2003 and was a special order for a Japanese collector. The amazing thing is that Chisetta is still around and you can still buy a brand new V16T. Now Chisetta failed for a number of reasons. First the car was just 280s and by the time that the car had hit the market in 1990 the car looked dated, especially compared to the new models which were ditching the wedge shape for more curvy lines. Second is the funding. With more there out of the deal, Zampoli couldn't continue the project on his own. And of course, the timing, which affected all these supercars all this time. Usually, I also include the price on the reasons why a supercar failed, but in my opinion, considering the fact that, that everything was made by hand, even the engine, I think that the Chisetta was worth it. So guys, thank you for watching and see you next time.